Hi, my name is Dylan God. Oh, hi, Dylan. I'm John. John oh, Hastings. Wow. John Hastings. Do we do a podcast Dylan together? Dylan. You and me? Oh, wow. Yeah, let's go. Let's go by this lake and talk about Club Random by Bill mm. Maher. That is pretty random. Uh, just full disclosure, everyone. We just recorded a real hot Patreon episode. We are naming. We're naming names. I wanted stuff edited Who's out. We got a fat clit. Who just took a shit? We talked. Both about of us. Of both of us. At the same time, go check out our Patreon episode and our Patreon. Patreon episode's pretty fucking sick. We're taking off our clothes. We're getting honest. We say crazy shit. So I rarely am so drawn into anger that I will start screaming at someone. But uh, I had a ride with a comedian who I said, Bill Maher, I don't like Bill Maher. And then she said, oh, why? You don't care about how they're taking our words. And then I almost, I was driving on the highway and I was almost like, I guess my kid could be fatherless and I'll kill us both because <laughs> this person shouldn't be on earth. But Bill Maher is one of the most visibly smug people yeah. I've ever seen there in we my go. life. That's like, right. He has a lot of work to do for me to not think of him as being smug. And um, he's another one. This guy went to Cornell University, which fills me with rage. He's very clearly just a rich dude who went to a good university. He starts doing stand-up in 1979. And he's one of those guys where you really get angry where and there's people like this all over social media where they were they were just and i mean we have no excuse for being those people john frankly but the he was just there when it started so he got to be a comedian and uh you just gonna kind of choke on that yeah no it was a real piece of shit because it was well like it, this guy he was in the same industry we were just at the literal best time he was absolutely the best time bill maher was a shovel salesman standing on a pile of gold at the very beginning of the gold rush, mm -hmm. like Bill Maher got a late night show. Here is how Bill Maher got a late night show. Dylan, are you ready? David Letterman leaves NBC. Jay Leno takes over the tonight show in the negotiations of David Letterman leaving NBC. ABC makes it known that they could do a late night show after Ted Koppel and their weird news night show. And they do data to figure out what that show could be. They need a show that is slightly different than stupid regular late night show. So it just stands out and can be better for a later format. They also need to keep an audience that's for a news show. They come up with the format of politically incorrect or pardon me. They steal the show that's already on comedy central with Bill Maher called politically incorrect. It's the only time I've ever heard someone of like a network is like, I presume he's eating a plum. Could you, uh, just fuck over everyone that gave you any sort of success and then do this show for us over here. And he was like, huh, certainly can. And I know, by the way, I'm going well out of my way to defend corporate executives, but I hate Bill Maher. So I'm just for no reason being like these poor, the executives at comedy central Dylan, as you know, are just a basket of puppies with wetness behind their ears. So they are innocents in all of this. <laughs> yes. Whoever you think might give you money. They are the right ones, John. Uh, David, uh, pardon me, not David, Bill Maher then goes on to host uh, Politically Incorrect, which is him and four random celebrities talking about the politics of the day. It is one of the weirdest shows to ever watch because sometimes they have theme nights. My personal favorite one, WCW theme night, Medusa, Sting, Roddy Piper, and Bobby the Brain Heaton. And this is where Bill Maher's smugness does not work because Bill Maher does not know any. Bill Maher is used to being the funniest man around unfunny people. And as soon as he's around someone else who knows how to talk in Roddy Piper, it's like it's like he's moved planets and the gravitational pull is different because Roddy Piper literally just shouts over him and Bill Maher doesn't even know just shout back. It's one of the most embarrassing things ever because Roddy Piper is just... Like everyone's like, oh, he's defending his art as a wrestler. I'm like, no, he's not. Roddy Piper's a fucking Roddy Piper's a fucking entertainer, and he's gonna fucking whoop up the crowd and be the thing you remember. That's his actual job, motherfuckers. And Bill Maher doesn't know how to control it. There's so many politically incorrects are literally like one guy being like, and then it's okay to kill kids, right, Bill? Because I want to feel like God. And then Bill is just sort of like, I gotta be honest, I was not paying attention there. I was thinking about an Asian prostitute is going to squeeze my dickhead in my office afterwards. <laughs> He's uh, yeah. I mean, he, they make his bones because yeah, you're right. He does it on comedy central. And then kind of like the unwritten rule is if you're going to be on HBO, 
you should push the boundaries. So how soon after nine? He's not on HBO. Hang on, hang on. Fuck your mother. He no. He goes a Comedy Central, and if you listen to our Nancy Grace episode, Bill Maher's another one of those things where it's like it was early days Comedy Central where they were like, we can't get any of these comedians. They all have sitcoms. Oh, this guy's a real shithead and nobody likes him, but it's the early 90s. So literally everyone gets a development deal. We'll do a development deal. We're a cable network. So we actually have to put it on the air. That's politically incorrect. Politically incorrect goes to ABC. He's on ABC until just after 9-11, where he says, let me tell uh, something to the it effect. Was, so that's what happened. He got kicked off ABC and went to HBO. Sorry. Yeah, he got kicked off um, HB, uh, ABC and he went to HBO. And like when he said what he basically said was. Uh, the 9-11 terrorists were not cowards. It's very, it's like, it takes a lot to fly planes into the towers, which is like, why does that need to be clarified in this moment, Bill? Like, that's the thing that Bill Maher doesn't understand where he's like, they tried to censor me. And it's like, no motherfucker. A bunch of people had literally died that month in a thing called 9-11. And you were making a correct philosophical point about the description of participants in something like that. But this is not necessarily the time for nuance. Also, if you gave such a shit about the representation of the Middle East, why was in 2003 in the ramp up to the Iraq war, you just bring on people to be like, let me tell you why we're going to go to Iraq is because I want to drink the oil and I don't like them. And Bill would be like, I don't agree with that, but that's the best point I've ever heard ever about anything ever. Yeah, it's the kind of thing where he just wants to be a um, contrarian, but without any of the part where you actually help anybody. He's just being I think he thinks he's. He thinks he's Johnny Carson. He does a monologue for no reason at this point. He's a news show and he comes out and does a monologue. It would be like before they fuck before, tw before 2020, they don't do a sketch. <laughs> they should. They should. Barbara, what are you doing here? You're dead. Or am I? <laughs> hey, this is welcome to my restaurant. All I sell is jizz. I'm <laughs> hey, Abby Hugh Downs. But I uh, am <laughs> referring to what my trousers do. There you go. Who is the guy who had Andy Rooney? Yeah. That's 60 Minutes. That's the craziest oh, thing to explain fuck. to anyone ever. Oh, yeah. There was this very hard-hitting news magazine show. And then the last three minutes were the oldest man on earth who somehow is aged like milk complaining about the most insane. I don't like people. I don't like women buying meat. <laughs> women, she, they're not strong enough to carry a steak. It's funny because that's the Andy. Rudy Evidently, I'm not allowed like, to try and fight the man who runs mass transit here in Chicago. He was, he was like those people who just do, you know, those girls who do their makeup and then tell you a long story on social media. That's what Andy Rooney was doing. But he had many leather bound books and got millions of dollars for it instead of just like hundreds I'll tell of you thousands who Andy of Rooney likes. Is. Do you want to know who Andy Rooney is, Dylan? Yes. He is the Joe Rogan of the greatest generation. If no, you fought in World War II, Andy not. Rooney is your Joe Rogan. You know, because they literally, I, you didn't live with your grandparents. I lived with my grandparents. My grandfather, he would say, it's just like how Andy Rooney said. And then he would be like, all right, where is this fucking going? I remember him specifically saying that to my grandmother because my grandmother was like, you got to drink milk with lunch, uh, Bernard. And I remember specifically being like, man, is, man, just like Andy Rooney said last night. And I don't know what Andy Rooney said, but I guarantee Andy Rooney didn't look at the camera and go, better not let your wife let you drink milk. Yeah. Makes you a woman. If your wife gets in the way of you drinking milk, that means you drink twice the milk, Bernard. Yeah, Bernard. God, I love my grandfather being named Bernard. You know what I mean? That's a grandfather not name. Bernard? No. Oh, what do you? Oh, I didn't realize you come from Europe. Bernard. We're Canadian. Anyway, you softly pronounce the vowels. You don't harshly. Then he becomes it becomes, turns into a real time with. Oh yeah, let's get real. You're gonna see now, tits. I'm gonna real time's really tits. interesting because it's on HBO in a time where HBO is this really cool network for nothing to do with Bill Maher. Bill Maher has nothing to do with HBO's success. He's literally there. He's not. He doesn't. Doesn't help. Doesn't hurt. He exists. He's the Luke Longley. Of the Jordan Bulls of HBO. Do you know what I'm saying? He's not even Steve Kerr. He's he, just a man with some hair. Go ahead, Dylan. He also is before John. This is the other thing. Before John Stewart, Bill Maher is the voice of the like lefty, like, you know, there's no God. Well, he kind of, yeah. well, it's this weird sort of thing of he's a libertarian, but this very weird libertarian of like, he's like, I like weed and I also like it where I don't pay taxes and people are hurt by that. This is a time, though, where being a libertarian was like 
cool because it was like, yeah, man, I think you should be able to smoke weed. And then everyone, uh, weed became legal. And you're like, wait a minute, you don't want to fund libraries? He's like, yeah, that's lame. Yeah, he's like, I, I already got my weed. Hang ten. I listen. I was just, I was part of this. I had a fucking Ron Paul shirt, and then I read what was in those pamphlets, and then I kept wearing it. No, I, I put it <laughs> and then you framed it. <laughs> yeah, Hall of Fame, Ron Paul. I still actually wish I had that shirt. Oh, it was a great shirt. That was Doug Stanhope. Uh, Doug Stanhope ran for libertarian thing, but then he needed money, and he needed. No, no, it's better than that. He was okay. gonna run for the president, and he's the only guy who like actually filled out the paperwork. And the last thing they were like, all right, if you appear in front of a crowd, that's a campaign event. All that money goes to the campaign. You can't touch it. And he's like, I'm a stand-up comedian. They're like, yeah, now you're a presidential nominee. You have different rules. And he's like, oh, I can't do that then. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and the yeah. thing, Doug Stanhope was a Bill Maher story. Doug Stanhope uh, was with uh, similar, was the same management or agency as Bill Maher. Got invited to, Bill Maher has a famous July 4th party every year. If you're listening to the Patreon, really? this is one of the two gossipy stories teased that I got about Bill Maher. The other one is so enraging. Anyway, uh, the uh, this one is Doug Stanhope goes to the 4th of July party. And like, it's a party. Like, duh, Bill Maher comes down in the pool in a, like, Uncle Sam hat, and they all jump in the pool. Doug, like people are like partying and on ecstasy and shit, shit like that. Bill Maher and Doug Stanhope, they're both flirting with the same Icelandic stewardess. Doug Stanhope's more fun of a guy. So of course the stewardess ends up having sex with him. Bill Maher knocks on the bathroom door where they're like, by the way, just showering. They were not having sex. They were just showering because they both jumped in the pool naked. That was it. And he's banging on the door going, no shower scenes in my house. No shower scenes in my house. Kicks him off and bans him from his show for life. And then, um, Doug Stanhope as an apology sent him a letter with keys to his apartment, basically like, "Hey, you can come over anytime and jump in my pool naked. I don't mind." And apparently, Bill Maher was very angry about that. We're right there. You just go, "Fuck Bill Maher, fuck you, bro. You can't have a crazy Fourth of July party." Also, I've thrown crazy parties. Do you know where? You know where you get a sense of pride as a host? Someone's fucking in the bathroom. Oh wow! Have you ever had someone fuck in a bathroom at your parties? I have, and no. it was really funny. No, I would kill them. I was pretty blitzed and I banged on the door and went, you got 15 minutes before a bunch of people are coming there to piss. And then one of them went, we're not doing anything in there. And I went, don't fucking lie to me. You're going to get peed on. And then I went back to doing fat rails on a patio. <laughs> that was pretty windy. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing rails outside in the wind is crazy. Montreal, baby. Oh my God. Those parties were so insane. That was the same party where a bunch of police officers were in the house and we had a large amount of narcotics scattered around and they went we got some noise reports and i went i don't think you did and he went what and i went all the neighbors are in on the porch or in the living room and they went we drove by and heard the noise and i went well that's not a noise complaint officers and they went yep you're right we're sorry and they left and then i hadn't my roommate looked at me and went what did you just do and i went i have no idea and then i went and cried in my bedroom for a little while that's good it was so nuts. Yeah. Me, my, your Turner friend and mine, Joanne, I'll over. never forget this. She stood in our kitchen in Montreal. She's got this long ass Belmont cigarette and she just went like. Fuck. This is really good for radio. What did you just do? And then I was like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wild stuff. Oh, that's fucking crazy. No, I never would have parties because I mean, I know how I act at parties and I don't want that to happen. I yeah, you didn't see where we lived. Up. There was a there was a grow up directly underneath, uh, and I remember asking the landlord after in the middle of the night, a bunch of vans showed up, emptied the grow up, and disappeared into the night as I heard the sirens. Like I literally saw like <laughs> they pull out, cop car pulls it, and literally like the door is swinging open. And I remember saying to the landlord, like, "Was there any mold in there?" And he went, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I said, "Are you guys going to do anything about it?" And he went. Eh, maybe in the winter. And I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> and that's when we started throwing parties. <laughs> that's that's fucking crazy. All right. So, John, tell me Killing. more about Club Random and Bill Maher. Because here's what we're I not know at, about Bill Maher. We're not at Club Random yet. I could tell you one more story. So, Real Talk basically is just like where people go. It's the Obama years. No one's really paying attention. It's very boring. He keeps having PJ O'Rourke on, who is this guy who, like, is a Republican who wrote for the National Lampoon. And, like, he'll make funny little old Joe. He's no friend of mine. Like, he's like one of those guys who's like, I've wrote a little ditty about a little president I like to call Harry S. Truman. All right, hit it. Like, those sort of guests. 
the Trump era comes, Bill Maher's ratings start to tank violently because the political discourse has moved on from where he is. His show is in very, very close chances of being canceled. He re-enters into a negotiation. Suddenly he launches a podcast. More than likely he made a similar deal as Conan O'Brien did in the last contract of his show, which said, I will do a podcast that will literally just be a weird advertisement for our show. Also, he saw Joe Rogan get $100 million and decides to launch the most insane podcast ever, Club Random. We are at Club Random. Well, Before we get to Club talk Random. about here- how his, but like, how does political discourse change? Because it's basically, he's the craziest guy, the most controversial guy yeah. still, because he said the Taliban thing. And he's fucking, he'll talk about it. He'll fucking he'll talk he'll about poke, it. he'll prod, you know what I mean? And then it goes from that to just, you know, a bunch of people are millionaires now who are like, hey, I made a sketch and uh, it's it's not, you know what I mean? I made a bunch of racist sketches so, and uh, I say the words. And so when you're like the guy who's like, I'm the edgiest guy in this medium, and then that happens, you're kind of like <laughs> neutered completely. It's kind of like what happened to the Simpsons when Family Guy came out. You're absolutely correct on all that. And it's also, he had people make the choice he should have made to keep his career going, which is like Dave Rubin and some other rats did the thing of like, I'm a liberal, but Trump appeals to me. And Bill Maher couldn't lose how centrist, there's that word, um, his audience was. He knows what is fucking, who breads, who, who uh, butters his toast. So he can't actually pivot to liking Trump. So he has to kind of do this soft thing. It's why he went so hard on, uh, on Muslims in the Trump years, like anytime Trump did something crazy, he'd be like, that's crazy. But you know what else is crazy? Worshipping Allah. And you're just like, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, and he's exactly that type of guy who seems like, I, listen, I, you're going to make, make it seem like I'm racist. I know all about Mohammers. Yeah. Uh, religion of peace. Doesn't seem very peaceful. Doesn't seem yeah, very peaceful. Oh, fuck. That's such a good. And also, like, get like three out of four things wrong, but the thing you get wrong oh. is infuriating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Give us examples. I don't know. I'm not going to. <laughs> I knew you didn't have anything. I, I fucking can see it in your fucking eyes. <laughs> no, give me some examples. No, that's good improv. No, that's excellent improv. That's the kind of improv I want to see. Hey, on we're show. on a beach. Nope. No, we're not. We're in a theater. And also, you don't know. You don't even add another thing. You just go, no. <laughs> you don't even good. give it you don't even give an alternate i can picture scene. the fucking 33 oh. year old with a weird creased head and a fucking guy smiley haircut just looking at you like dylan that's not accepting your offer no yeah <laughs> i don't think that you really want to be in touch with the spirit that is spontaneity i would love to do improv with people who done done comedy before because they just focusing on yes ending i'm like oh it's so good to be here at this pool with all these naked kids <laughs> and then they have to be like yes <laughs> what the fuck did you say dude i mean how much can we take I, it's it bad now course? i was joking hey, let me ask you this can we make this as an internet prank you and i we join up we can make this happen one day of the second city training course i've been gone from toronto long enough that we can get this to happen and that instructor will not recognize me and i'm going to say this right now i could destroy someone's day <laughs> All right, let's start up. Zip, zap, bop, zip, bop. No, you got to do zap, zip. <laughs> no, it's you a. You should definitely just join a first thing improv and try and tape it. Just, just troll it. Just four chan it. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> where you are, it would just be a bunch of actors. Trying That's the thing. No, no, no. I have to do. You have to do it. In, I've taken these improv classes in Toronto and in Toronto and much, out all over the fucking Canada. No, you'd have to do it in like Niagara Falls. Or you'd have to do it in somewhere where it's own where it's no one. I got one word for you, motherfucker. It what ottawa oh, that's a good one. <laughs> there it is right that class just a bunch of government workers and kid chaos himself <laughs> all right anal so it's the club yeah. random what is club random about we are, we're not quite yet so joe rogan gets the spotify deal and i guarantee this is the first time bill Maher realizes that podcasts could be seen as more important than television in the eyes of the i assume and sex workers he specifically <laughs> requests scared. yeah hi are you scared. from the philippines uh that doesn't uh, no you're gonna have to pretend to be i'm irish you know what i'll want mm, filipino that's spanish and asian no i yeah. want just the asian and yeah. i want it to be fearful i want it to be, i want you to be scared of how big it is say it's big and then yeah. small i want them to be asian that way we can talk about my opinions 
on push Shang-Chi me into Shaka a river Island. and then suck me out of it. Uh, so here's the thing with it: is he launches Club Random, and it's the greatest thing ever. I love this. I love the direction podcasts have taken in the last year. No longer is it people that know anything. It is now people with drug and drink problems just conducting what they think are interviews, but are really not. So <laughs> have you watched any Club Random, Dylan? Let me let me just ask you a question. I would just like to make a, an add-on where I listened to a talk radio show. This was a couple years ago now, and the callers are all insane. And podcasts are now just those insane callers, but they're but you have nothing to like bounce them up against so you don't really know they're in as insane as they are does that make any sense correct and what's amazing about club random is it's also people it's it started as people are coming out of the pandemic so people don't know how far bill have slipped because they're all his friends he he starts by just getting random luminary friends of his and then it gets fucking wild like it's so fascinating the early episodes because jimmy you can see on jimmy kimmel's face like what are you doing bill like this is not You called me and said, hey, come over and be on my podcast. And you're literally like, so, Jimmy, you know, Anthony Fauci, would you give him my his at me his address so I can have some people kill him? (laughs) I I mean, who else is on Club Random then? I want you to guess. I want you to. Okay, we got Andrew Huberman. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Correct. The guy who's like, I'm a scientist. Here's how you get your traps to be yoked. (laughs) <laughs> no, that guy. No, it's not nothing physical. You, you got to remember it's Bill Maher. He is a weak, shitty man. That is not. Well, he's 68 now. Yeah. yeah all right. I'm still, uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to still personally attack him. My mom recently said, no, to me, I she mean, said, I can't. No, I didn't. I, I wasn't about age. It was like, you're not going to be like, here's how you get jacked at 68 because you can't gain muscle anymore. Really. I guarantee you that if he, if he thought that it would make him some money or some like weird lady would be into it. I guarantee he'd be on the T he's just not, he hasn't figured that's the next step. I give it, I give it six more months. Then he's bill T Mar bill testosterone ball. Okay. So who else is on it? Um, Jordan Peterson. I know he had Milo Yannanopoulos on his actual show. He had Milo Yannanopoulos on his actual show. He can't have Milo on now because Milo is like, he's no longer saying just the quiet part loud. He's just saying like the parts you should never say as loud as possible while no longer being gay. That was my favorite part of the Milo Yannanopoulos guy where he appeared on a bunch of Russian talk shows, like looking really tired and confused. And he's like, I'm not gay anymore. I don't know. Can I get some money? I am. I did this for money. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay no more. Um, and so basically, yeah, so he has, uh, Jordan Peterson, Peterson on that one's insane because clear. So here's the other thing that Jordan, all of the people that Bill Maher has on are fall into two camps. Either they are podcasters with an ideological goal in appearing near Bill Maher's audience, or they are Bill Maher's celebrity friends who have no idea what's about to happen. And he does nothing to assist either camp. First thing that happens that is mind meltingly enjoyable for me. As soon as he sits down, the show is presented as if he and this person have not met yet. They're in his actual basement, which in the recent episodes, he's been acting like um, uh, he doesn't want people to know where he is. Like he's like, don't, don't tell like he literally, there's more than one episode where he's literally like, as they're starting, he's going like, make sure not to tell them that it's my house, even though we're at my house. Okay. Are we rolling? We are. Well, I'm not editing that out. Like, you're just like, okay, well, you could have, <laughs> that sounds like a text you could have sent, Bill. Um, but it's also like the whole thing is he's old enough that he thinks he, oh, a podcast, that's where you start talking. You're like, sorry, we're just recording now. It's such a loose conversation. We didn't even realize. Yeah. I mean, no one's confusing it with being loose because, all right, Dylan, um, I'm going to ask you a question and then I'm going to do it. And then I want you to answer it. And I'm going to do what Bill Maher does when a guest is answering a question. Uh, so Dylan, did you walk your son, um, outside today? No, I haven't yet. Um, because when he just crinkles and (laughs) why? So Bill Maher just has version 1.0 attention deficit disorder. Where he's I like, don't even think it's attention deficit disorder. I truly think what it is is I think he has the Wendy Williams alcohol uh, dementia. Like I think he has, like I just think that he thinks, I think he thinks he's Joe Rogan because he's in his Joe Rogan basement house. And it's so fucking insane. Go on. 
Go on. I mean, I have no. I I've never seen Club Random. You've not. These clips have happens. not made their way to its algorithm. You don't have just Quentin Tarantino and Judd Apatow for no reason sat at a bar. It's also the thing is he really experiments with where to shoot it, and you can really tell he, this is his project. You know what I mean? Real time. That's for everyone. Club Random. That's where the auteur Bill Maher comes out. <laughs> I mean, Club Random also is very funny where it is like fuck i feel like we've done a bunch of these now because we did nancy grace the episode before that was shannon sharp and club random is just hey what if club shay shay wasn't cool yeah you're absolutely correct it was if if club shay shay I, I assume club random is very similar to the club shay shay episodes that do not feature either monique or cat williams because i got news for you i'll never know i am not I have enough of this in my life. I can't also start watching every club Shay Shay because it's if you like sports, you can because they just had Johnny Manziel on who is like a guy who is like, uh, yeah, the Cleveland Browns gave me two million dollars. I spent it all on blow. And the only regret I really have is that I didn't start doing heroin, too. First of all, if you want to fucking speak to me and don't think authority, but he's such a fucking piece of shit. It's like. It's fucking awesome. If it's you want to speak awesome to me, what a piece of shit he is about not knowing who Johnny football is. You can suck my dick. I don't know. Fuck about fuck. But if you are employing your friend to help you embezzle hundreds of thousands of dollars from the NCAA by signing a bunch of shit, guess what you are to me? <laughs> fucking hero. Johnny football should play in every Super Bowl, and he gets to pick the team and the position. You know what I mean? That would just and the drug. How much better would have this Vegas football been where it's the chiefs versus the fucking 49ers. Johnny football's there. He has taken a bunch of fentanyl and he is asleep in the middle of the field on top of the ball. Go get it boys. <laughs> yeah. The Montreal Alouettes, which is so funny, but the Montreal Alouettes signed him in the CFL, which is like the cokiest city he could have been in was Montreal. It was so good. It's like, it's so he's, good. I he's assume basically like, I want to go to the CFL but I also want people to piss on me for a reduced price. Montreal. Yes. Look, I want to play football, but I also want to live in a city where I could literally fall downhill into a brothel. Well, the city's Montreal. You just have to live in Montreal. Yeah. It's um, smaller, but there's the same amount of brothels. That's why I always say about Hamilton, Ontario, Canada is it has the exact same amount of homeless people as uh, Toronto does, but like a third of the population. So you just notice them way more. Yeah. Play ball. So, this is the br thing I see about Club Random is it's which is it is what it is is uh it's a 68 year old man rather than a 55 year old man and it must be insane I mean we're experiencing it it must be insane where it's like I want to be an entertainer he's been an entertainer since what 1979 it's now you 2024 point, yeah. and he's being absolutely destroyed by Shannon Sharp who is like hey I've better than you in everything else in your life and now I'm even better at, than you at this. And also, I don't care about myself. I just care about being gossipy. And that has helped him so much. Shannon Sharp is the gossipiest. He's six foot six. No, he's six two. He's on juiced out of his mind in his mid 50s. And he just wants to know the goss. I feel like Shannon Sharp is I don't one even second think... away from having someone who just like fucked a couple of her husband's friends on to talk about it. And Bill Maher just wants to talk about like how good the eighties were. I'm going to say something crazy. I think you're incorrect. I think Shannon Sharp is on so many steroids. He thinks he's Walter Cronkite. Like his life is so sped up and crazy. It's actually slowed down. So to him, that's a 30 second interview where he learned one thing and it's been four hours. And all he did was listen to someone rant. I mean, the Monique interview, he goes like, wow, he said that. <laughs> that sounds crazy and dumb. My favorite part is she's like, says something wild about DL Ugly. And he went, that doesn't sound like DL. That's like, sounds like, and you could see that in his brain, he wants to go, sounds like someone would make up. Don't do that, Shannon. And it wants to make money. <laughs> we also want to be, we want to be here for uh, another while. So what How, other glasses has uh, Club Random had? Okay. He had uh, John Waters on, which was very fun. Uh, because you could just tell that, uh, like John waters figured out what was going on and you just took over the conversation. It's very interesting. There's a couple of different tactics. A few of the others have done this. Seth McFarland did this as well. Brian Cranston kind of does it, which is they figure out in 30 seconds that bill is 
pretty cut. This is the other thing that no one's talking about. <laughs> oh, there's so much booze around in the clip. Lit like, oh. in a lot of these. The yeah. Quentin Tarantino Judd Apatow one, like he is, he has what I describe as I was going to have a drink before this party started. Everyone's really late. I've had four drinks. This party's already started. <laughs> like he is literally behind a like ludicrously purple bar that is too low. So the cameras always have just shots of shit in it. And he's like, he's fucking cut in a bunch of them. He's talking to fucking Jordan Peterson, who's supposed to be a recovering fucking barbiturate head, just fucking smashing weed into his fucking face. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Isn't that, I mean, this is something that a guy told me who's kind of dumb is that there's like a thing in your brain that kind of like gets worn off when you turn 65. Like that's so you actually don't give a shit. And obviously now he's 68, so he doesn't give a shit plus three years. What is our generation going to be like in our 60s? Just fueled Dead. by... By our parents? No. Our parents' property money? We are about to have the largest wealth transfer. There's a certain segments of millennials that are about to become a level of insuffering. And it's the same ones that, by the way, are all in their fucking houses that their parents bought them when the interest rates were cheap in COVID, who keep saying to me, it's about the hustle. Y'all are pretty fucking close to being part of a fucking Facebook update that has a Seymour attached to it. That's all I'm going to fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Where millennials go to really let it lose. Oh, Facebook. let's fly. I'm with you, man. We're bringing Facebook back. No, we got to do it, man. Facebook community groups. Let's mobilize an attack on another president. Let's mobilize an attack on a community group that's fucking with your community. Yeah, let's do. What's another community group? Yeah. Let's declare war on a community group in the name of Bill Maher. In the name of Bill Maher? Yeah, we're the Mariers. I feel like Bill Maher is like. He's like, mm, I think I'm going to put more effort into Twitter. And then everyone around him who he pays is like, actually, TikTok is really, I said Twitter. Yeah. Hey, oh, so Bill Maher, a couple of other fun facts. Bill Maher is the highest paid late night show writing staff uh, in the industry. And that is specifically because Bill Maher is such a piece of shit to work for. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. He does not like when the writers are funny. So what he will do is you'll have the joke pitch meeting on, I believe, I think it's Wednesday. And he will say, this is all really bad. I'm going to write it. And then you get the joke packet he wrote, and it's all the jokes uh, sent back to you. And he does that every week. <laughs> like There's a bunch of stuff like that where you're like, he does that every week. And it's like, yep. Uh, he like good. he'll stop and retake for certain sort of like they've started doing it. Um, it was like live forever. And now it's taped. And apparently like he's stopping and like rejigging his takes. Um, you can also tell that Bill Maher is trying to go after the anti-vax audience because of his weird, he can't full on do it because he's going to lose his entire audience if he does. So what he's very, he really like, he go like he, what he does is he goes, I'm vaccinated. But let me say this. Everyone else who got, it's going to fucking die from that vaccine because it's poison, but not me. You know I what mean, I mean? Yeah. He's, uh, I, this is the thing. I don't understand. Not I don't understand. But He's like, a grifter. It's for money. Him. Bill Maher is it, Bill Maher doesn't give a fuck about anyone's autonomous body rights. He's never going to Wyoming. Bill Maher started doing a New Year's Eve gig in Hawaii specifically so he could get flown to Hawaii every year for Christmas. This man is an asshole. There is no conceivable fucking way he gives a fuck about anyone but himself and the person that operates the massage parlor he frequents that I'm going to assume is somewhere. Uh, he definitely lives in the hills. I'm going to put it. He's heading. He's, he's old school, Dylan. He's going straight down a little street you and I know well called Normandy. He's banging a right on seventh. He's in K-Town. It's time to get a squeeze and a lick, but it's extra for a lick. <laughs> yeah there's some i mean there's some talk of him kind of um courting the right wing audience he uh sp spoke back against people who called uh covid the wuhan flu because he said people have been naming things after where they came from for centuries look at the zika virus yeah it's also like yeah but but here's the thing bill does this thing where it's like <laughs> this one element of it's like the most annoying straw man fucking a way to argue ever where it's like, Hey, uh, can you not take a shit, uh, in my sink? <laughs> I don't think we should be swearing in daytime. And you're like, okay, sorry. You're right. Pardon me. Let me just rephrase that. Can you stop defecating in the place? I clean my dishes. You tiny fucking human. You know what I mean? Like that's what Bill Maher, Bill Maher's entire argument strategy is <laughs> Dylan. You're not going bald. You were bald when you were a baby. 
You're just returning to what you were. And you're like, what? What is that? What you so you, you all, wasted you time? You think it's all? It's not just him being a 68 year old man, and then people get no. conservative with time. No, it's like you all you calculated. you live you sir live in a city called Toronto. Do you want to know where I live? Los Angeles. Mm. I know the type of thing that Bill Maher has become. Bill Maher. This is the other gossipy story about Bill Maher. And get ready for the sentences about to come out of my mouth. Every year, the guy from Maroon 5 throws a Halloween party. It's in a it's in a place called like the Great Big Lodge, the Great Oat Lodge. It's like over there uh, in Los Angeles. And it's every year. He stopped doing it uh, for a couple of years in COVID. And Bill Maher very famously showed up at the party, walked up to the bouncer and lost it on the bouncer going, where the fuck's the, f- the celebrity VIP line? Do you think I'm supposed to wait in the line? I'm Bill Maher. Get out of the fucking way. Get out. Get out. Get out. That's no, it's real fun. No, it's real fun. It was a celebrity VIP line. Bill Maher just didn't read the sign. Just walked by the sign and yelled at a yeah. guy. <laughs> fucking loser. Such a fucking bitch. <laughs> at a Halloween party. What do you think his Halloween costume was? It was definitely Heath Ledger Joker. There is no way that guy has not <laughs> gone as Heath Ledger Joker every year of Halloween since that movie came out. That's me. I'm the chaos. I'm the chaos guy. Yeah, I mean, he just like he just trying. He just starts to stir shit in the best way possible. He's like a fucking. It's not the best way possible. It's the it, that's his sixty eight year old part. It's like his strategy to be a shithead. It's like, hey, let's spike their fucking fountain drinks and then make sure that no one in town has any ice cream for the floats. You know what I mean? I mean? Like, around when we were children, he fucking did the goddamn uh, religious. You've never watched. Have you watched religious? No. Bill Maher is that, being so atheist made me want to become a Christian. I agree. I'm a big old agnostic and I, this is also a thing that doesn't exist anymore. There used to be really ardent atheists that were yes. the most annoying human beings in the and entire Bill world. Maher was the face of that. Like whatever Bill Maher believes, it's like the thing that if there's 60% of people, let's just say that 60% of people believe one thing and 40% believe the other. Bill Maher believes the thing that 40% of the people do and then takes it to a point where those 40% join the 60. Yeah. He doesn't like, he's like, I'm again, I'm against the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki because I wanted them to bomb the whole fucking country. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay. So like we took over uh, Germany and Japan, but we could have used the camp still. Yeah. I mean, I just think that Winston Churchill should have gone after India. You know what I'm saying? It was his all along. Terrifying. All right, John. Well, Dylan, what are we doing next week? We're going to pause it and figure that out. One second. Apparently, we're talking about Kathy Griffin for some reason. So we're doing Kathy Griffin. I'll tell you why. She's a real interesting corner of um, pop culture history in that she's a real. This person was never that successful, but just kept sort of almost being good that eventually she was canceled for posting a bloody Trump mask and became I'm going to be honest, the most annoying person I agree with almost everything on. You know what I mean? One of those people. We don't talk about that in culture anymore. That there used to be a time where you're like, I agree with everything this person says, but you want to know what? I fucking hate him and I'm out of here. Like, that's the thing. Like, it, it's everything. It's like, you got to be on their side. I'm like, I'm going to be on that person. I, first of all, I associate with no one who has got, uh, uh, who's wearing that many different types of cargo style clothing. <laughs> yeah, where are all your pockets going? Fuck it. Exactly. You got you do not have enough items in your life for all those pockets. And if you do, well, then you're probably a fucking commercialist capitalist pig. Ooh, we're coming in hot next week. Kathy Griffin, baby. Listen, please. Please piss 